So let's say that you want to upgrade your car audio system, but unfortunately you have one of those stock head units that has literally everything built into it, and unfortunately it's going to be impossible to replace. What should we do when we can't upgrade the factory head unit, but we still want to get an amazing sound system upgrade? In this video, we're gonna discuss several different options and their benefits and drawbacks, and one of these options may surprise you because it's one that I rarely see used. Let's get into it. So first off, we want to make sure that we cannot, in fact, replace the factory head unit. Just because the factory stereo has many different vehicle control features built into it and climate control features doesn't always mean that we can't replace it. There are many aftermarket devices that will allow us to interface between an aftermarket head unit and the factory vehicle's computer system so that we can still control all of those features. But to find out if one of those solutions exists and if we can easily replace the factory head unit, I recommend checking out Crutchfield. On the Crutchfield website, we enter the year, make, and model of our vehicle, and we can see if there is a solution. Crutchfield will even show us exactly what we need if there is a replacement solution, and also notify us if there is not. I've used Crutchfield for literally every vehicle I've ever owned in order to do this test and determine what I need. That's why I feel so good recommending them to you guys, but now that I have the channel, they've also been cool enough to sponsor this video, so definitely check them out. If you're a new customer, there's a special link down below that will get you $20 off your first order and if you're an existing customer, there's a special offer for you guys down there as well. So you've done the check and found that you cannot replace the factory head unit, or maybe you wanna keep that stock look and keep the factory head unit. The first option that most people are gonna be aware of is a line output converter. With a line output converter, we're gonna bring our speaker wire signal into the device, and then we're going to have RCA connections for the output of the signal that goes to our downstream amplifiers or other devices. Now understand that not every line output converter is created equal. I definitely recommend that you get an active line output converter, which means you'll have to provide a 12 volt constant positive source to this along with a ground connection. This will be a powered device if it is active. And also depending on the LOC you get, some of them have different factory integration features and different features that allow you to do things like restoring base that is removed from the factory signal. The advantages of an LOC are they are inexpensive and relatively easy to install. The disadvantage though is a lot of times the vehicle manufacturers with their stock audio system, they'll actually apply a factory EQ curve in order to make those stock speakers sound good. And what you have to remember is with an LOC, whatever that signal is that's coming in, in terms of frequency response and that EQ curve, that's going to be that same signal coming out. Also, a lot of today's latest factory systems have what's called ANC, which is active noise cancellation. And if your vehicle has that and you use something simple like a line output converter, a lot of times you'll have weird noise issues with adding on an aftermarket car audio system because you need to be able to defeat that ANC and some of the other options we're gonna talk about later will allow you to do so. The next option is a factory integration digital signal processor or a DSP. A good way to explain this is this is a very fancy line output converter. Essentially, we can again take in those high level speaker level inputs, we can do all the magic inside the device here, and then we can have RCA line level outputs going to our gear. Remember how we were just talking about how a lot of times that factory EQ will be applied? Well, with a digital signal processor, we can correct that electrical signal, that factory electrical EQ, and we can also do full system tuning with this DSP. So it's important to understand the differences there. We're correcting the electrical signal from the factory, but we're also able to tune the actual acoustics of the sound using a DSP. With a DSP as part of our car audio system, we can control things like time alignment, crossovers, and like I said, equalization for each of the channels that come out of this DSP. So depending on how you set up your system, you could potentially control each individual speaker and its tuning, which allows you to truly achieve amazing sound. There are some disadvantages though. This is going to be a little bit more of a complex install, but don't fear, I have tons of videos here on the channel about DSP. If you're completely new to car audio, this is something that will take some time to learn. There are tons of great resources out there, but it is more advanced. So if you do feel in a little bit over your head, you might wanna consider having something like this professionally installed. Another disadvantage is you could still potentially have those ANC mic issues. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And 
and DSPs, a disadvantage, are typically a bit more expensive. But something I always like to remind everyone is with a lot of DSPs, you have a high level input along with low level inputs, which means if you did have an aftermarket head unit, you could send RCA line level signal into the device, still do all the great tuning that you're able to achieve with a DSP and then send that signal out to your amplifiers. The reason I mention that is you could look at getting a DSP as sort of an investment. Getting a good solid DSP will last you for many, many years. And there's been a lot of times that I've taken a DSP out of one vehicle of mine and put it in another, used it in multiple vehicles, so it can definitely pay off. Now, since a factory head unit can have that equalization built into it, and it can also have factory time delay, a lot of times it can be a pretty complex process to correct that manually with a DSP. It requires a lot of knowledge. So a good option for you may be what I call this a signal correction interface. With this device here, we again have the high level speaker level inputs coming in and we have our RCA line level outputs coming out, but this has software built in that allows it to automatically correct the signal and make it nice and flat and clean for us to use. The advantage of this device is it really takes a lot less knowledge to set up. It's essentially an automated process to correct that signal. Additionally, this is going to be less expensive than a full-fledged system DSP. But another disadvantage, do remember that the signal coming out of this is only a flat electrical signal. If we still wanna do all of that tuning, we're going to need to add on an additional DSP. A lot of times for the JL Audio devices here, you'll see this device paired with this device for full system tuning. So the next option when you still wanna get amazing aftermarket sound but you have to keep that factory radio is this, an advanced amplifier interface. In this case, we're looking at an Amp Pro from PAC Audio and this little black box allows us to basically tap into the connection between the vehicle and the factory head unit and then send a perfectly flat, clean RCA line level output out. The advantage of this option is this is super easy to install. You really just have to get back behind the factory head unit, you unplug it, and you plug this into it, into the signal chain, and then you're just going to connect your aftermarket gear. The disadvantage though is obviously with these plugs here, these are vehicle specific, so this option only exists for certain vehicles. Another advantage is a lot of times the engineers of these devices have also designed a solution that allows us to over overcome those ANC mic issues. With a simple separate add-on that is oftentimes associated with this system, we can bypass the use of those mics and we can avoid those noise issues that a lot of times the factory system will introduce. Another disadvantage, these can be a little bit on the costly side, but in my opinion, again, the value of being able to have such an easy install by just plugging in this plug and having those perfectly clean outputs in my opinion, I think that's worth it. Another disadvantage though, remember that even though we're going to have a nice flat electrical signal coming out of this device, that doesn't mean that our acoustic signal that we actually hear is going to be perfectly flat. We have to do all the correction that we would normally use a DSP for. So it's not uncommon at all to see a device like this paired up with a full-fledged DSP. Now the final option, and a lot of people don't really think about this, but you can just bypass the factory system altogether. You could just send signal straight into your amplifier from an auxiliary device, something like a cell phone or a high-res player. Now, if you wanna do something like this though, I have a couple of recommendations for you. First of all, you wanna look at getting one of these, an amplifier that has a DSP built in. With a DSP built in, you get to control the time alignment, the equalization and crossovers, everything that we talked about before. But another really cool feature on these is we can set up multiple presets that use different input sources. So as an example, what I would do with this is I would set up a preset where I'm only going to have that signal that's coming from something like my phone or the high-res player, that's going to be the only thing sending signal to the system. That way I have a perfectly clean signal because it's super simple, it's coming straight out of that device and going right into the amp. The disadvantage though is if you did something like that with a normal amplifier, obviously you wouldn't have the ability to have any of the stock audio signal from the vehicle coming in. And I do still think it's important that you have that factory radio signal coming in. And the reason is a lot of times vehicle alerts, things like navigation prompts and other things that you're going to want to be able to hear from the factory head unit, you wanna be able to bring them into your system and you could bring them in still with a digital signal processor amplifier 
like this. You would set up one of your presets to bring in your signal from your phone or whatever your main source is going to be, but you would also allow the signal to summon from the factory head unit. You're just not going to be playing music on the factory head unit, but it's still going to have nav prompts and communication like phone calls that would still come into the signal into the DSP amplifier you can sum it all together this is all going to be application dependent and you're going to want to do your own research but I'm just mentioning that it's an option so there you have it guys to learn more about interfacing with a factory car audio system definitely check out the other related videos here on the channel and don't forget that next time you want to upgrade your car audio system you guys should definitely check out our show sponsor Crutchfield you can learn more about them and take advantage of a special offer at the links down in the video description a big thanks to them along with Jerry William and the rest of the patreon membership team a big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible and thank you for tuning in and watching.